Okay, welcome back. So in this session, we're gonna talk about the colors of the Data Vault Ensemble. And you've probably noticed the um, blue and yellow and green colors uh, associated with Data Vault and Ensemble modeling uh, in pretty much anywhere you've seen or read about it. This is one of those forms of analysis that kind of forms a foundation of how we understand how this pattern actually works. So let's take a quick look as to where this came from. And really it's a pretty simple premise. The idea is that if we look at a table construct using the colors analysis by separating the things that are a key or an instance from the things that are associations or relationships from those things that are context or descriptive properties that that's actually what we're separating so in this case the associations or relationships are green the things that are keys or identifiers or instances are blue and the things that represent the context that describe things is yellow. Now in this case, many of you may not be familiar with third normal form or, or entity uh, type modeling, but um, here we're just showing you what's common in a lot of data modeling, which is we use what's called an encapsulated form, which means every one of these forms actually includes its own key. It has to have the context that depends on that key, and it also has any foreign key relationships or relationships that allow you to know what they're associated with. And they're all embedded into the same table construct. And this is really the encapsulation approach. Now, not to get into too deep into thermal form, but if you notice here, for example, the sale has a foreign key relationship that says, I know that I have a customer and I have an employee. It's really critical for the foreign key, the instance key that says, I'm an employee or a customer to be in the sale because that way we can make sure the sale only has one. And oh, by the way, it has to have one. So these kind of business rules can be very well enforced using these techniques. Now, if we go to the ensemble version of this, of course, we've applied unified decomposition. So now we've spread out the parts into multiple component pieces, but each one of these things is still its own ensemble. So even though from here you can see sale and customer and region, these things have um, many tables, but if you look at only the blue parts here, those represent the instances of core business concepts on which all the other parts depend. You can also see, which is really interesting here, is that um, the tables that are yellow are 100% yellow because again, they're only context, they don't have their own key or relationship. The things that are green are only green, they're only relationships, and of course, the blue parts, the hubs, only represents the instance or the key, but nothing else. So this is really how things have been spread apart, and that's the secret for the agility we have. As was mentioned in one of the prior sessions, probably the most important thing to consider when we're working with ensemble modeling is that we need to treat an ensemble with all its parts in the same way as we would treat something that was in the same table which means I can't go and start discussing things about a particular satellite without considering it as part of the whole. It doesn't have its own identity. I can't go directly to it. I can't have a handshake directly with a satellite. There's no foreign keys in it. I just can talk to the hub, which is really the instance of that key, and from there I can get to everything else around it, which would be the same exact thing I do in the entity, which is I find the instance by its key, and then I look inside the table for the things that describe or relate it. Here I find the instance in the ensemble and then I look around it to find what things are directly attached that describe it and form the relationships. So hopefully that clarification is helpful and we'll see you in the next lesson.